What's up YouTube? We're back with another more fun concept today and that is Concurrent Timelines Trundle. Now Concurrent Timelines, for those of you who have never seen the card because it's a bit underplayed, for the rest of the game, first time you play a follower each round, pick one of three followers with the same cost to transform it into. Important to remember that it only happens the first time each round. I feel like a lot of people forget that. But the core build around of this deck, the best combo that we have is playing the ice pillar while the timelines are already activated. Keep in mind that all of the play effects and summon effects still happen and then the transform occurs. So in the case of ice pillar, you play this, you give your opponent's strongest um, unit vulnerable and then you still transform this into an 8 cost which are on average pretty well statted and some have pretty good effects as well. And of course since this combo on its own can be a bit inconsistent we play plenty of ways of helping us, of giving us better odds of finding these cards. Like I said concurrent timelines is pretty important so we also play time tricks to find it if we whiff early on and we also play station archivists another good way to find it somewhere in your deck besides that to give us consistent chances of finding trundles we also play two copies of entreat and of course aloof travelers just as a draw card to cycle through the deck now let's go through the rest of the units first uh there's not that much to cover to be honest we play ice veil archers as well as kindly tavern keepers mostly as anti-aggro and anti-tempo tools because our deck is a bit more on the grindy side and controly combo-ish side we usually want to stall a bit in the early game and then outgrind our opponent or have an explosive finish around turn eight when the pillar comes up archivist i already mentioned but of course it's also very flexible it's not only there to find concurrent timelines but also whatever removal we currently need or maybe whatever value tool we currently need in stuff like entry time trick iterative improvement movement. And Aloof Travelers is another mostly a control tool. Um, of course, after the stat line nerfed, sees a lot less play, but this deck doesn't really care about the stat line of the original unit because, of course, you want to transform it into another four cost unit. And besides that, the spells that I haven't mentioned yet are mostly removal. Um, the strong part of the PNZ control package paired with a strong AoE removal of the Freyer package. So we have Thermal Beam, we have Mystic Shots, we have some Fumes, and of course Avalanches and Ravines. Now Ice Shard might be a tech consideration, but I don't think it's really necessary in this deck. And for some utility, we play Three Sisters, of course also a potential stalling tool, but also a great finisher, especially Entombing, whatever it tries to block Trundle, or Fury of the North comes in very handy very often. Uh, we even see some great examples in the gameplay there paired with mirror mages that uh, were once an ice pillar. And iterative improvement super flexible here. Keep in mind that we'll often not copy the units we main deck. The idea here is also not really to copy an ice pillar because as soon as we play the ice pillar it transforms. We can't iterate it anymore. But it's still super flexible. We can also often copy some nice units off of our opponents. The other cool thing is that the plus one plus one buff of course stays. It basically gets transferred to the unit that gets transformed. So the final unit will still have that plus one plus one buff. And apart from that, I think the deck is pretty straightforward. I already explained most of the strategy. Only things to consider are we want to mulligan pretty hard for the timelines. We don't care that much about Trundle because we draw him eventually and we run in treats. Definitely want to adapt to the matchup and look for matchup specific removal. So. Whenever, for example, we play against Teemo, we keep Thermo Beam on one, and sometimes we, we need Mystic Shots for Battle City Mayor or whatever. As for tech choices, there are a lot of interesting tech choices you can take. Anything with a good player summon effect can work. Stuff like Ice Veil Archer is an idea. You could try to experiment around with defective swap bots. Uh, there's a lot of choices. Of course, you can also tech in different control choices, maybe some troll chants, maybe some ice shards, that kind of stuff. But yeah, I found that list as is somewhere on Twitter. I don't quite remember who I need to credit for this list, but I did like it a lot. It felt fairly well-rounded and consistent. And while it's surely not the strongest deck to climb with, I did feel like it has tier 2 or tier 3 potential. Could definitely hold its ground. I did climb up to diamond with it. And it's just a unique and interesting playstyle, so I could definitely recommend it. And like promise, a couple of gameplay examples for you. Is it the Mustas? Who knows? Alright. Wonder which version of this deck my opponent's gonna play. Generally, Puffcap matchups should be rather tough for us, but this is a great start. Mystic Shot. 
think I like keeping it. Like the early, the the only way this spirals out of control early is multiple teamos. Archivists are really cool in this list. How good is Echo Akshan real talk? It's really hard to say because the sample sizes are small and the skill agency is absolutely enormous. So I know the ladder win rate is not that great and I know that Tier Red and me combined have like a 60 something percent win rate. But that's also like through Platinum and Diamond, right? But we were climbing. So the best answer I can really give you is I don't really know. This could be worth Mystic Shotting. Eh. Probably Archivist and see if I pull something I can entreat. Beam. I mean, Mystic Shot's just a better beam here. Actually, what, what info do I want to give my opponent? Probably that I draw beam at some point. Ooh. I mean, these two are nonsense. I think I'll go with the high risk. Ah. Uh, now I regret not having picked the Mystic Shot. I risk high reward, let's go. I might just click pass here so I don't tank a Pokey Stick or a Poison Dart. Poison Dart would be fine, of course. Wow. Pokey Stick's scary. Liking your content even more lately. BTW, you can already start thinking about my birthday present smile. <laughs> Thank you so much, Peacemaker. Thanks for the Prime. 10 months. Yeah, close to the birthday. Okay, so yeah, high risk, medium reward. I think pass is just better. All right, now we get a free thermal B. Wait, that's, that's hot. Shared spoils in this deck. Not something I would have expected. But this means our uh, assembly bot potentially grows to infinite heights. Good thing about Assembly Bot is that it also kind of soft targets Sejuani in a way, right? Just due to the fact that... Pass is probably good. Just due to the fact that after a freeze he can still grow. Trochan's scary, right? What if I set up an OTK with this later on? Nah, uh, uh, no cap though. Legion Rummer is probably straight up better. Okay, only Elixir left. My opponent is really um, way too liberal with tapping under certain mana thresholds. Like if they just wouldn't have tapped below two mana, I probably wouldn't couldn't have swung. But of course they also wanted that Sejuani trigger, I suppose. <laughs> Sneaky puff cap. So sad how much worse the drummer is than Young Wish. Yeah, a classic example of a uh, premium power creep. Wolf Rider. Okay, it's getting hot in here. Probably Fumes, open attack. Opponent plays Sejuani and play Thermo Beam. Although they don't, probably don't play Sejuani on defense. Open attack for sure. And Three Sisters is also really neat with Assembly Bot. Maybe you should main deck Assembly Bot. I keep that for Sejuani, I think. What happens first, Avalanche or Assembly Bot? I th Good question. Thermo 3-5 isn't that bad? No, no, for sure not. 
But it's also my only real answer to Seju right now. Stack all. Stack all, stack all. Okay, 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 wait, wait, wait. Now the question is what pulls what? I actually don't need to kill Sejuani right now, right? Three out of five. Because I really don't want to lose the bot, I could just uh, three sisters him. For Fury. Let's go. Block here into Avalanche is kind of hot. Wait. So after three sisters, he'll have eight HP. Can't really Avalanche this turn. Hey man, hope you've been well. Have a great steam. Have a great steam? <laughs> Thank you so much, Moctezuma. Thanks for the tier one. Yeah, I've been great. I like setting up an avalanche here. All right. My guy shall live. I'm scared of Sejuani, of course, of the freeze, but overall we should be fine. Uh, none of these are really good. 8-5 Fearsome or 7-7. Seven, seven. Fearsome doesn't help much here. I think I like the 7-7 seven, seven more. I have to play this before Avalanche, by the way. Yeah, Avalanche isn't looking too great right now, I'll be honest. Oh, forcing a lot of spells. That's nice. Okay, not too bad. We gotta let the bot go, but at least our opponent also kind of hurts themselves. Trundle can still swing right now. He gets three attack. Could then die to a last ping, but it doesn't really seem like our opponent has more. Could have another pokey stick, but I think that would be fine. Like, Trundle got timelines, he already did his job. And right after this attack, Aloof should be good because we are only scared of another Sejuani right now. Probably Aloof. Yeah, but I really like Aloof after um, attacking so that Trundle got the extra buffs from the Thermal Beam. Ooh. I'm surprised the opponent went for that pokey stick with FTR in hand. There we go, perfect top deck. Ice to meet you. I'll Ravine here for sure, just for the healing and damage. I think that's better than beaming, right? Can Ravine plus beam, of course. <laughs> Let's pop and coin flip. Let's see if my opponent knows how poison darts work. Just found out Wild Rift is twice as big as lore. Well, what did you expect? You're comparing a mobile game to a card game. A mobile version of the biggest video game ever to a card game. Should swap to streaming phone. 
Man, if I was just in it for the numbers, I surely wouldn't be streaming uh, this game on Twitch. Jollfish Kak W. Mermage isn't bad because we play iterative improvements. But we'd need to have one in hand in the first place. GG. You can't take this crown. Have we seen the Jace reveal articles? Sort of, but not really. Okay, full mull for uh, timelines. The ravine? Ah, we'll find something. We play three avalanches, three ravines. <laughs> I haven't missed timelines on one a single time. True sign of a good player. Hello, new best friend. That's cheating. I'm gonna bait my opponent first. See if they overcommit. They technically could be thinking I'm running Ice Shard. Oh, I can't count mana. I played timelines on one, didn't I? <laughs> Lookout is kind of hot. Let's go for that turn four Trundle. Also kind of hot. Good blocker for, for this board. Whoa, they let the hit go through. That means I might get it. I might end up getting a 7 mana. Okay, never mind. Opponents in <clears throat> true full sand mode. I blocked the 2 1 that I least want to copy in the future. Definitely the chemist here. Three mana Tron looks pretty good here. King of Trolls, That's the only one mana one three drop order as well, right? But one three is really only a good defensive stat line, and only in a meta where there's a lot of two ones, quite specifically. Will I be banned if I post the link here? No, you will not be banned a link friendly zone oh man this isn't looking too hot I think I like open attack Maybe with both. Because I'm most likely ravening or avalanching this turn. Should we make it render double up, I suppose? Harpoon. Interesting. In this case, I don't think I'm ravening. This is not very fun against Ping City. Hmm. What am I even looking for? Guess Mystic Shot. Another Ravine for two healing. I think I like Mystic Shot though for potentially um, preventing double ups.
the music's getting a bit too wide. Can't really play the second Mystic Shot while my opponent has doubled up mana. These soft passes feel good. This might bait my opponent to develop more into Ravine. Or it might not. I don't want to play this into a make it rain. I think I can entreat. That could be a waste of mana. Maybe time trick is just better. Because I don't really want to find a trundle here, right? These are both pretty good. That's really a telescope deck. <laughs> I don't play telescopes in this. I don't know what you mean. Oh, you mean the gem stack. All right. Interesting. Drop is still horrible. I don't think I can agree. It's telling me I have 0.1% drop frames. Could just pass this through until we find a ravine. But our opponent technically draws more burn than we draw healing. Well, we have tavern keepers in deck though. I think I like going proactive here. And units from four plus regions. I don't think I can do that. Iterative. Don't have any. Oh, maybe with Mirai Warden. I don't know which one of the two is better. Lost Soul for more minions. It doesn't work because it transforms into Lost Soul. Doesn't give me Twin Blade. Like, this is pretty good with Archivist Spell as well as with Mirai Warden right here. Go for fury kills or iterating. We have something on that case. Just as I suspected. This is a tough one to pilot. We don't know what our opponent's hand is. Might be double double up. Can't quite go for lethal here, unfortunately, but we're close. Ooh, good draw. Look, look. 
really need the heal here. So we kind of only need to play around another double up. Or like keg into double up, which is why I won't play aloof here. Take this into a ravine. Okay. Something for all. Yeah, this is gonna be a double up, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Got top deck. I mean, it was almost guaranteed we top deck that. With the cards we saw earlier on. Actually, it was guaranteed, right? Because we drew a loof last round. GG. Still undefeated with us, right? Bandle burn. Long time no see. I mean, some good anti-aggro cards, but I feel like Battle Burn still overruns us. Play stackers. Oh. Since I'm playing Tavern Keeper on three, I can just take the damage. Doesn't matter. Like it doesn't make a difference if I Mystic shot this now or if I would have Mystic shot earlier. Could have swung first, that would actually have been interesting. If Zex blocks, I have a better Mystic shot target. It's annoying. I think I want you to swing, right? For Ravine next turn. Which server am I playing? Europe. That is wild. Oh, I think the big... Oh, I played that too quickly. I didn't check my top deck. I think iterating the Yordle would have been really uh, big brain. Could keep iterate for Tavern Keeper, though. I'm wondering if the Zig swing was actually correct by our opponent. Don't feel like it is. It's definitely a very unconventional play, but it, there's a chance. I suppose if my opponent's hand is clogged, maybe they hold multiple Zigs or something like that. Could be a reason. Remember 
sounds pretty wild as well. Feels like my opponent should have put that on the Yorda. Copy demo. Doesn't really look that good. Ponyan and Ezra in this deck. Yeah, then you'd need to play a lot more target cards though. Like a lot of our control tools are AoE. Or like aloof, right? Which is hand manipulation control. Um, wait, I ravine next turn, actually. I can sacrifice this guy. Do I always ravine next turn? Pretty much. No poison dart here would have actually been interesting. But that's also, like, a, hard, a tough play to make. How good is Endrons here? If my opponent passes. <laughs> what are my thoughts on Lux Poppy? I haven't really played it myself. It looks strong, but not broken. Probably tier two, maybe tier one in the hands of the right players. Actually, I like Shellfolk is a bit of a broken card. But I would say uh, the, the deck itself isn't broken per se, like balance-wise. Is it even worth shooting the guy right now? Probably not. He's been climbing like crazy with Zix Talia. Yeah, Zix Talia should be decent. I mean, the Renekton 6 deck I played is fairly similar, right? Good Avalanche next turn. Uh, the iteratives are really good for the ma aggro matchups with the tavern keepers. Something I never considered. Okay. Opponent's got that triple decimate type of hand. Show me the fervors. But it didn't play Conchologist yet, right? No. House Spider. Not the most common tech in that deck. I just always need to keep some fumes mana for my opponent's fervors and we should be fine. Get ready for a beat down. Not sure if we want to offer this trade. Probably not. Once the wiser. 
Chat, I think we're sitting comfortably here. We're chilling. Oh, comes I'm streaming this late. Wait, give me a sec. I mean, we saw all the decimates. But then again, my opponent can later on further the demo, which I can't remove right now. It's probably worth fuming. Like, I basically lose to double fervor into pokey stick or some other way around. Pokey into double fervor. This is most likely a, a, a fervor. Alright, we should be fine unless our opponent top decks. Uh, the nuts. Actually, I should try Ice Quake in this case. I passed too quickly. Should have definitely Ice Quaked. And now my opponent should not have outs. Already used two stacks. Yeah, yeah, but like I'm saying, like, everything my opponent can... Like, the, their chances are really bad for winning. Their chances are really bad for winning. Twelve o'clock midnight. The, their chances are really bad for winning. Alright, I need a little break. I need a cup of tea.